All right, children, here's a video to help you a little bit with your DNA interactive. We did a DNA digital interactive. Make sure you don't get that one. That was posted on the 25th. We're looking for the more recent one that is due January 8th. So when you click your link, it should take you here. Go ahead and click on that. If this pops up for some reason, don't freak out. Just click download. That'll take a minute because it's a big file. Click on that. La, 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 waiting, waiting, waiting. There we go. So this is the page we're familiar with. And from here, we need to download this. So we're going to go File, Download, Microsoft PowerPoint. And then we got to wait again. All right, click on that. And now you will be at the point where you'll be able to manipulate this. All right, some of these pages are going to be on the own, your own and some I'm going to help you a little bit. Um, this page, you're just going to take these pictures and move them from largest, sorry, from smallest to largest. All right, I want you to tell me uh, the relationship between DNA and chromosomes, DNA in the nucleus, and DNA in the cell. Okay, so think about what is where and what things are made out of. All right, on this page, you're going to label the parts of your DNA. Um, I will help you a little bit with one of these. If you look at number three here, you'll notice there are three bonds. Because there are three bonds, this must be C and G in there. And then you got two different sizes, like this is one carbon ring, this is two carbon rings. So the fact this is two tells you it's a purine. And so now you need to know which one, C or G, is a purine. And if you look back in your notes, it will tell you that G is a purine. You can get rid of that X if you want to. Um, so you can put G or you can put the full word guanine in there. And that's how you figure that out. So here you have two bonds, so these must be A and T, but you need to know which one is the pyrimidine and which one is the purine. So you can go back in your notes and look that up or Google it. All right. right here, you're just going to put what DNA stands for, what is the function of your DNA, in your own words is fine. Um, for structure, basically all I'm looking for here is that it's a double helix. That's the shape of it. Um, and then the location, where in your cell do you find your DNA? Down here, we're looking at what is a nucleotide. So you're going to move this around and take these little lines and move them as you need to to build a nucleotide. And there is a picture of a nucleotide in your notes. Or you can look at these guys right here, folks, right there. And here, you're just going to drag these over. These are our four different nitrogen bases that hang off our sugar there. So you just drag them over. That's all you got to do, okay? And then you got a couple questions. What is a nucleotide? Straight from your notes. How many different nitrogen bases? Now here, for some reason, the box keeps disappearing. Don't freak out. Um, just go down here to this box and right click and say copy. And then go over here and right click and you can paste. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Never mind. That went crazy. Oh, it already did it, that's why. Okay, so just copy and paste that box and then you can put that number in there. Or you can put a whole new text box if you want to. All right, and then the name of the four bases, that should be easy enough. Down here, you are gonna sort purines versus pyrimidines. So when you look them up to do page three, that can also help you to do this one. So some of them are both, like they're both present in DNA and some of these are unique to the two, and they are in your notes. So look those up. All right, down here, we're looking at our different bases, and you have to remember some things. You have to remember that purines are the larger base because it's the smallest word. So it is this two carbon ringed base, and then purine is the smaller one. So we can see that right there. And then we have our adenine and thymine bonds. So you need to know how many bonds are between A and T, and then how many bonds there. And these are your bonds right here in the middle. So there's a bonds, 
there's bonds right there. Okay. And then you're going to write a short but sweet description of each of these. Okay. Down here is pretty easy. You're just going to put in the letters. If this is an A, A bonds with T. Okay. So you're going to put the letters in. Um, over here is Chargaff's rules. That is in your notes. You should be able to look that up. Um, down here, this is a little harder. You need to figure out the percentage. So how you figure out the percentage is you have 10 bases here. How many adenines? Well, we have two adenines. So two out of 10 is 20%. And if we have 20% adenine, how much thymine do we automatically have? And then you have to add those two to figure out cytosine and guanine. So this is just like your calculating bases worksheet that we did before Christmas break. All right, down here we have our scientists going over them again. In the main box, we're going to describe the structure of DNA. So this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want here. I'm going to give you the answers. I'm looking for the fact that it is a double helix. All right, I'm looking for the fact that it has four nitrogen bases. And they are A, T, C, and G. All right. I'm looking for the fact that the backbone is made of sugar, deoxyribose sugar in particular, and phosphate. All right. So that's what I'm looking for in there. What exactly is our DNA made out of? And then we can also put in here um, that the base is hydrogen bond to each other. Okay. And remember, we use hydrogen bonds because they're weak. And then here, you're going to look at your um, scientists that are in your notes and do just a short little description of what each of them did, does. All right, now this part is actually probably the most complex part of this uh, digital notebook. So in here, um, it gives you all kinds of hints. This is very helpful over here. And you're going to end up moving this thing out of your way because you're going to, you're going to, build a little piece of DNA here. And I gave you more pieces than you need in case you accidentally delete one and that way you don't have to freak out. Um, so say I am going to color or adenine, it says up here, color adenine orange. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select an adenine and I am going to format the shape. So you gotta right click and format the shape and then this little thing pops up. This is the easiest way. And then you got fill. You want to give this a solid fill and look, it happens to be on orange. All right. And once this is here and I want to do more than one adding and that's in here, you can hit control and select more than one at once and click solid fill. All right. And now I want to do the guanines green. So I'm going to go over to the guanines. I'm going to hit control and select all the guanines. I'm going to try to get this one that's hidden. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to do solid fill, but they came out orange. So you just go down here and you click this little guy and you click green instead. Okay. That's all you got to do to color. them. And then you're going to start building your DNA. So we're going to move this out of the way. Boop, put it right there. We're going to pretend like everything's colored, even though it's not. I'm going to move some of these guys out of the way. When you click these, if you click the wrong part, you lose your word. So you really need to click them on the outer corner and then you'll get everything, okay? So I got an adenine already here. I'm gonna leave this guy up here. I'm gonna start with a phosphate. So I'm gonna grab my phosphate and put it up there. And look, I have a little triangle. So the only other one with a triangle is my deoxyribose sugar. So the triangle has to go on the triangle, right? And here I have an adenine that's a square. So square on square. You'll notice this thymine here, oh, I didn't do what I said, I didn't click on the edge, um, is upside down. Because remember the DNA, the two sides run in opposite directions. So that means I'm going to have to flip some of these over. So like this sugar, I got to flip it over because my thymine's upside down. So that will attach there, which means if I have a phosphate attached to that, all right, it's going to have to be upside down too. Okay, so then you just, that's one rung of your DNA, and it says in your directions to make it six spaces long, or six spaces total, sorry. Du, 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 du. 
Somewhere on here it says it. Okay, six spaces that you're going to use. So you're going to have three rungs to your ladder. And again, you'll have some extras. That's fine. You can delete them when you're done, but you don't want to delete them until you've made this in case you accidentally delete them. Then you have some questions here. Um, what's the backbone made out of? We already talked about that once. What makes up the rung? So basically what part of your nucleotide is the rung? List your nitrogen bases. Which one goes with guanine, adenine? Um, which one is most similar to cytosine? So think purines, pyrimidines. Uh, here's Chargaff's rule, similar to we done before. Um, each student, now obviously we're doing this digitally, so this one does not necessarily apply. So this one right here, you can just skip. All right, skip that one. Um, here, I, the thing I'm talking about is the fact that we had to flip this side, okay? And um, what would you have to do to make it more look like an actual DNA molecule, all right? But skip number eight, you don't have to do that. All right, down here, we're labeling some parts of DNA replication. I'm going to help you out with this. Uh, so number two, this here where it splits, this is called your replication fork. Remember talking about that in class or with lecture? All right, then we have these uh, yellow guys. We got two of them. These are the ones that are adding the nucleotides. See, they're grabbing these little guys. Uh, they're making the DNA polymers, so they're called DNA polymerase. They're enzymes and an ASE, right? Um, so the two strands, this is also going to be DNA polymerase, sorry. That's DNA polymerase. Uh, this enzyme is the one that's breaking the helix, so that's called helicase, another enzyme. Then we have two strands. This one is continuous. This is called the leading strand. And then this one down here is done in little segments. That's going to be the lagging strand. Okay. Why is my A capital? I don't know. I'm fixing it. There we go. That's my lagging strand right there. Okay, guys? So I give you the answer to that part. You should get all that picture right. All right, over here, we're going to look at the functions of them. So DNA helicase, I just told you what it did. It's also in your notes. DNA polymerase is also in your notes. Two main steps, uh, steps for making DNA and what we make in the end. What we make in the end, because it's not in your notes, but I did tell you, is two semi-conservative strands of DNA. Okay, that's what we're making. So semi-conservative, what this means is that it is half old and half new. All right, up here we got DNA polymerase reads DNA template strand from the, this is the 5 end, and it reads it to the 3 end. Let me give you that one. And this one's the opposite. It's going to be 3 end to 5 end. Those aren't super important. I'm not going to ask you a lot about that. You should just be aware that the phosphate hangs off the 5 end. All right, the leading strand of DNA that we saw in the picture is the one that's continuous, and the other one that is not is the lagging strand. All right. So what is the replication fork? This is where DNA is split. Okay, during replication. Uh, two replications form something. We had a picture in our notes. They form a replication bubble. There we go. And then we're going to label our things down here. So um, we've got replication fork right here. And then this is the continuous strand. So this is the leading strand. And this is the one that's done in little segments. So it is the lagging strand. All right, guys, that's all she wrote. Good luck on doing the rest. Don't forget to turn it in. Bye.